Well, it's not, it's not complicated. It is about family. And it's about you desiring to be the best here and compete for four quarters for 60 minutes. And at the end of those 60 minutes, we look up and see what the score is. It's that simple, really. We'll define success here when you come in the locker room after 60 minutes and you sit to the guy next to you and you can say to him, I did every single thing in my power today to make sure you were successful. Not me, you. And when we get to that point, we're going to have success. It's going to be a journey. We're going to have to get out of the wilderness together. We're going to have to cross a few Jordans. We're going to have some people that are going to try us and, and, and not be disciplined and not do things the right way. But it is a family type. We've got to have faith in one another. The second and probably most important thing that we got to get right on the front end is the attitude. The attitude. Attitude is how we talk to ourselves, period. It's what you think about you. It's what we say about us when we're here together and what we think about ourselves. And you've got to fight to get out of the wilderness. And it can be done, I have no doubts. Some schools in, in rivalry games choose to play it out of hatred for the other school. They choose to play it and, and, and talk and, and say negative things and bad things and untrue things and, 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 and focus on the negatives of the other school. Some try to do that. That's not who we are. Here's why we will win the game tonight. Because you're going to play for love for one another. Not hatred for somebody else. You're going to play out of love for one another. Because the guy from Tennessee in here understands what it's like for the guy in Mississippi here. The guy from Florida understands that this university is the one that gave you an education. The guy from Cali understands that. The guy from Atlanta, from Georgia, from Alabama from Louisiana, from Ohio, from Illinois. And because of that, you're going to play for great love for each other and for that, those people in those stands. We start on the Grove. Ole Miss, the tailgate was rolling early. 7-3, Alabama had the lead. Cyrus Jones knocks it away from Itavius Mather. Scoop score, Alabama up 14-3. But Mark, look at this. Alabama got away with the face mask. He definitely did, but what a great job by Cyrus Jones punching it out and continuing the play, scooping and scoring for Alabama, but it counts as a touchdown. The play. That's true. 14-3, uh, Alabama seemingly in control, but now the Tide hadn't done much on offense. It's 17-10, and Bo Wallace goes to work, finding Vince Sanders, 18-31, 251 yards. We're tied at 17. Special teams, Lou, just killed Alabama. Christian Jones fumbling. They sure did, and here it is. They got the game. All of a sudden, you give the ball over to Ole Miss, deep in your territory. And right after that, on a third and goal, Bo Wallace, the strike to Jalen Walton. Terrific job by Jalen Walton coming out of the backfield for the touchdown reception. Ole Miss had the extra point block, 23-17. Alabama driving, ready to break their hearts. Lofted from Sims to O.J. Howard, and 5-9 Sinquez Golson gets it. Initially ruled incomplete. Replay looks and gets it right. Interception, ball game. And boy, did they come storming out onto the field. Tom Rinaldi with Hugh Freeze after the game. Well, man, our kids just fight, man. We're just fighting. Defense plays so good, it means a lot. I mean, but man, I'm proud as heck of our kids. You know, for them to just keep fighting, find a way to win, just uh, just proud as heck of them. Guy, you freeze. Interesting tale, doesn't he? He is, Chris. One of his coaching heroes is none other than Steve Spurrier, which explains why he wears a visor just like Spurrier, runs that up-tempo offense just like Spurrier. But even the head ball coach might have had trouble duplicating the success that Freeze has had there in less than two years. He has made Ole Miss football relevant again. Nobody saw this turnaround happening this fast. Nobody except Hugh Freeze. Fly around, get great work in with great attitude and great effort. Okay, Rebels on three. One, two, three. Rebels, Rebels let's go. Get your butt going. Go, Bo, get him set, Bo. Tempo, tempo. This is the real Hugh Freeze. And this is the Hollywood version of Hugh Freeze from the 2009 movie, The Blind Side. Okay, what did you say to him? You should get to know your players, Bert. He tested 98% in protective instincts. Nothing like my husband. Zero. Zero, zero. I always get that everywhere I go. Well, you're not as goofy as the guy in the movie. And I said, well, thank you. Freeze was a central figure in the football success story that was Michael Orr. 
at Memphis's Briarcrest Christian High School. Orr went from abject poverty to the NFL and did so with the help of Freeze, who fought for his admission to the private school. I played a small role in it, and I'm honored to, to have played that role because at the end of the day, a young man received a chance, made the most of it, and has changed his life. Is there any truth that you actually auditioned to play you in the movie? <laughs> I tried. I wanted to compete. I had one line in the movie, and it took me 15 takes to get that right. I, I kind of said, OK, I'm not your guy. And that, that one line was, wow. The line was, wow. Wow. As it turns out, Freeze's life would have made a good movie, too. In just seven years' time, he went from a high school football and girls basketball coach to coach of the Ole Miss Rebels. The kid who grew up on a Mississippi dairy farm now faces number one ranked Alabama. To think about those days that uh, I used to milk those cows with my cousin and to sit in, in this chair at this university in this state, 45 minutes from that farm is quite humbling. 22 years ago, he took his bride to Tennessee's Neyland Stadium on their honeymoon and made a promise. We found a, a, a gate that was cracked and, and we slid in a, an SEC stadium. He stood there and said that one day I will be um, the head coach of an SEC football team. And I believed him. When Freeze was hired by Ole Miss in December of 2011, some of his new players had one question. Who is this guy? Never, I mean, I personally never really heard of his name. They know him now. The rest of America, well, the Freeze family is here to help. He's a really good coach. I think it's a, like really hard for an SEC football coach to be able to spend time with their family, and he makes that his priority. I love how he preaches to them. Here's why we will win the game tonight, because you're going to play for love for one another. Right here at the University of Mississippi. You don't cuss. You don't drink. And the bazooka gum. Yeah. What's the story behind that? Well, it's that? big red to start the game. But at halftime, if things aren't going so well, we're going to go to bazooka. And I make my old line coach change every stitch of clothes he has on. If we're not doing well offensively, he's going to have to change some things. Breeze has changed the perception of Ole Miss football. He's already led the Rebels to a bowl win, top five recruiting class, and ticket sales are at an all-time high. His honeymoon vow has come true. So when you got this job, did you think back to that day? Oh, yeah. First time he ran on that field. I, I'm tears now. Same thing then. Here we are. You saw Freeze's three daughters in the piece. This is a true story. When Freeze was a coach at Little Lambeth University in Jackson, Tennessee, he was on the sideline, and then came his 10-year-old daughter, Reagan, tugging at his pants, saying, Daddy, I think you're starting the wrong quarterback. Freeze thought about it, switched quarterbacks, Lambeth won the game. That, Chris, is a football family. He's an interesting guy, well, Joe, very easy to root for. I really believe we are our best um, attribute as a staff is that we are relational coaches. I think that's a, a bit different, maybe new and fresh than some. If that's really our niche and we really want the time that we spend with the, the kids that are entrusted to us and that families have chose to come to our place, if we really want to impact, we have to be intentional. And I don't, I don't think, I think the first step to that is, man, making sure you capture their hearts and minds. Uh, particularly hearts first, the mind is a little harder because everything life throws at you, it plays games with your mind. And I, I still fight that, you do, everyone does, but you capture their heart and, you, and they know you're on their side and in the foxhole with them and in this for the long haul, good, bad, ugly, that we're handcuffed together, doing life together, um, you, you got a chance now. First tackler bring y'all down, first guy bring you down, huh? Good, good, eh? Hey, we gotta make a play on the ball. That's all right, good, good, good work, good angle, DJ. Good angle, DJ. Hey guys, I want to tell you, I want to tell you that, uh, man, we're we're honored for our foundation to uh, to partner with these great guys and uh, and be able to benefit you guys at the Palmer House.
When you talk about bringing guys into the program and developing them, it's always been about more than football for you and this program under your leadership. So another trip to Haiti around spring break this year. Why is that so important to what you do and who you are? As many people know, I'm a person of faith. That does not mean that I'm perfect. That does not mean that I have it all figured out, but it, uh, it, it does mean I know the one who does. And, and I just believe with all that I am that uh, the platform I have is given to me um, to use beyond the, the markers of a 100-yard field. And um, I'm really trying very hard at this point in my life to not be defined by just what the scoreboard says. Um, I know and, and accept that uh, that's the way people will judge me and ultimately even the administration here and others will have to judge me based upon what that says, but I do not have to, to judge myself as a father, husband, as a person who wants to impact others in life. I, I don't have to be defined by that, but I'm so convicted that what I do is not who I am. It's just what I do. And I love what I do, but it's really not who I am. Um, I have to tell you real quick, I, I just want to talk to you about our vision of making it happen, making it happen right here. There's times that life will break you. There's times that will hit you in the gut. It's no matter what, we've got to stay in the game. You can't, get, you, you can't get discouraged. You can't lose sight of the goal. You can't lose sight of the vision. And whatever our spoken goals are among our place and among our fans, our daily actions have to meet our spoken goals. You can't say that you want to be an honor roll student and not go to class. You can't say that you want to be all-American and not practice hard every single day. You have to win the day. Liberty Football has already found its next head coach. Please join me in welcoming Liberty's head football coach, Hugh Freeze. Freeze was being courted by numerous Power 5 programs as a coordinator, but felt that Liberty was the right fit. I like coming into places that I, I think the environment in this case is, is good for my family. Um, it's somewhere where you're embraced and, and people understand grace and celebrate you for, for, for not only um, you know, who you are, but whose you are. And uh, so I, that kind of made it uh, become in the lead pretty quick. Well, we're really excited. I think what an incredible coup for uh, Liberty to be able to recruit somebody of the caliber of Hugh Freeze. We're, uh, we're very blessed to have him. Um, God just seemed to order the steps in this uh, search process for it to go so quickly. And, and uh, we're just uh, really excited about what he's going to do with our football program, both on and off the field. Freeze brings with him a track record of on-field success. In five seasons as the head coach at Old Miss, he helped turn around the Rebels, leading them to a 39-25 record, including two wins over Nick Saban and Alabama. Throughout his career, he has developed a reputation for building high-powered offenses, and he has the same expectation at LU. I'm not going to change what we've done offensively. It's uh, everywhere I've been, it's, it's set records and you know, we broke all the records at Arkansas State and at Lambeth and then at Ole Miss also in, in a very difficult conference, probably in, in a conference where you would say on paper that we don't have the exact talent that maybe some of the others do that we played, but yet we're able to, you know, average 30, 35, 40 points in a given year. So I just believe in it so strongly. It's what I know and uh, won't, won't get away from that at all. After two years away from the sideline, Hugh Freeze is ready to be a head coach again ready to be better than ever before, and ready to lead the Flames to success at the FBS level. There's going to be a little extra juice on that, on that game day because I've been out. But As we enter into this offseason, that you remember that it is about commitment, consistency, your desire of what you want this team to look like. Look, this team is yours. The team, it gets to, you get to decide what this team is like. But remember this, the last half of spring, we've said we want to say yes to the things that matter. Anything else, man, that you're saying yes to that really doesn't have any kind of significance to this football team, to your growth as a, as a, as a believer, or to your growth as a student, to your growth as a man, any of that garbage needs to go. Last thing I want to say to you is, man, I enjoyed coaching you this spring, and, and I enjoyed it, and thank you for letting me coach you hard and with passion and knowing that it's not personal, man. It's just, man, it's just, we got to demand a standard that we chase every single day. And I know it works. It's worked everywhere I've been. And the buy-in has been good. And I hope you enjoyed the work as much as we did as coaches because we enjoyed every minute of it.
Thank you for bringing it every day. And most of you were definitely tougher together and you pushed through any of these little hurts and pains and nicks and bruises. Man, that's the way you have to play the game. It's got to be with a tough mindset. But it's time to go to work. It's time to go to work, man. It's time to go to work. That opener will be here before you know it, before we blink. So guys, decide what kind of team you want to have. Remember, make your yeses to things that matter. Stay away from the yeses that have risk with them, okay? Sure. All right, let me pray for you. Father, we pray that you'd bless these young men. I pray you'd bless them with great uh, decisions. Father, that you would keep them safe as we uh, break for a little while from each other. Lord, you'd fill them with a desire to, uh, to honor you first. And then, Father, to uh, just desire to, to compete at the highest level and chase the standard, Father, every single day. Father, I thank you for these coaches that you've brought here and these kids that you've brought here, Lord, for every single one of them. And I pray protection over their lives. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Family, one, two, three. Amen. See you, coaches.